Hey guys, in this review, we're covering the brand new Ninja Woodfire Outdoor Oven. It's an electric outdoor oven that Ninja claims can reach temperatures of 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Why such high temps? In my opinion, it's to compete with the massively popular outdoor pizza oven market. But unlike most pizza ovens, it's a lot more versatile because it's also a smoker. Kind of. It's more of a smoke flavorer. It's an electric oven with a little wood pellet smoke box. And we definitely put it to the test with a slow cooked pork butt. We also put it through the pizza gauntlet to see how it handles large batches of pizza for my family of nine. Let's get right into this review. It's a decent sized box held together by a couple straps. Popping it off reveals a quick start guide, a pellet scoop, and a pizza stone, which is smaller than I expected. The next layer reveals the terracotta colored oven, which is a first for Ninja. The pizza stone is roughly 12 and three quarters by 12 and a quarter. That's not huge, but good enough for a personal size pizza. Remember, the pizza is gonna shrink back a little and you want a little wiggle room, so you're probably gonna end up cooking a 10 to 11 inch pizza in this. Inside the oven reveals more, like this roasting rack and pro heat pan. The pro heat pan is a very thick, solid unit, obviously meant to hold up to the high heat. The accessory frame is needed to hold the pro heat pan and the roasting rack sits in the pan. The accessory frame is also needed to hold the pizza stone. The smoke box comes with attached instructions and it's small. It's not like a traditional smoker where there's a large hopper attached and that's because it isn't meant as a fuel source, it's solely to add flavor. It has a simple menu system with eight functions, warm, dehydrate, smoker, bake, broil, specialty roast, max roast, and pizza. The pizza function comes with six presets, Neapolitan, Thin, New York, Pan, Frozen, and Custom. It also has a wood fire option that will light pellets to introduce smoke into the oven. One neat function is a two-stage setting with specialty roast. You can set stage one temp for high heat to put a sear on and then dial it down for a longer cook. The oven will adjust on its own. The opening of the unit is small for an oven, but typical for a pizza oven. It's about 13 and a quarter inches wide by seven inches tall but that bottom one and a half inches is taken up by the burner and accessory frame. All right, so my very first test is gonna be a temperature test. And yes, I'm running this in my three season room, but it's completely opened up. I obviously won't be using the smoke box. Without the smoke box, it's pretty much just a convection oven. There might be some other insulating or venting factors that make it for outdoor use only. So I wouldn't recommend using it indoors and definitely don't use it indoors if you're using the smoke box. A couple things of interest to me are, can it get to 700 degrees and how long does that take? I started with an internal temperature of 73.5 degrees and it took roughly 26 minutes of preheat time. And honestly, that's pretty good if the stone is 700 degrees oh, wow. and it is. I burnt myself a little here. Watch out for that door, it's hot. So will this ninja replace our beloved uni or rock box as the preferred pizza oven? Stay tuned to find out. First, I wanna test it as a smoker. I think the quintessential test would be making a pulled pork because if it can't get that right, I won't trust it for anything else. This is a 10 pound pork shoulder and that's about the max size for this oven. First, I'm gonna slice this up a little so the rub will penetrate the meat a little deeper. And then I apply a mustard binder, which you can't taste when it's finished. And for the rub, I'm using Meat Church's Holy Cow Rub, which is typically for beef, but I love it on literally anything. I'll leave a link in the description. I then wrap this and leave it in the fridge overnight. One thing to quickly note, the oven comes with a trial bag of pellets, but mine didn't arrive until about a week after the oven came. I did buy a bag of pellets with my initial purchase. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I paid $400 for this oven. Not cheap. Let's talk about accessories. The Ninja Pizza Peel at $30 is a great deal if it works. I'm using my Gosney Peel, which works amazing, but costs $85. The cover at $25 is also reasonable, but what I'm not feeling is this dink stand for $200. And if you want the side tables, that's an extra $25. There's much better options on Amazon, like this Nuke table I'm using. They're under 200 and they come in a few configurations. They're great for any pizza oven or outdoor appliance. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, time for the pork butt. It's going on the roasting pan, inside of the Pro Heat pan, on top of the accessory frame. So the quick start guide says a seven to 10 pound pork shoulder should cook for six to eight hours at a temp of 250 degrees to reach an internal temp of 203 degrees. 
I've cooked a lot of pork shoulder and eight hours would be fast unless it's in a crock pot or something like that. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it has something to do with this convection aspect. There's also no mention of wrapping, so I'm going to let it go as is and see what happens for eight hours. This is also a good test for the smoking option. I'm going to fill it up and I plan to keep reloading it for the next four to five hours. Make sure that's filled to the top. Unless it's filled to the top, apparently it won't light, even though it lights from the bottom. The display reads IGN for igniting, and after a few minutes you can start to see and smell the smoke. After about 15 minutes, the smoke really picked up, so much that it was coming out of the seals on the door. At about 30 minutes in, the smoke started to decrease, and after about 40 minutes, I decided to refill the smoke box. These pellets aren't completely spent, but there's no smoke, so it's a good time to empty and refill. After refilling, you need to hold the wood fire button down for three seconds and that ignites the pellets. I repeat this process for another four times. One thing to note is that the initial smoke really is the best smoke. After that initial smoke, the subsequent smokes weren't as smoky. That might have to do with the fact that the oven is hotter and I think the smoke works better in a colder oven. Okay, so eight hours is up, let's check the temp. I got this in at 9 a.m. hoping to eat by 5 p.m. And I can immediately tell just by inserting the thermometer that it's not done. So it's been going for eight hours, but nowhere near 205. You definitely want pulled pork to be over 200. This has got a little ways to go. I'm gonna wrap it and throw it back in. The temp reads 177 degrees, and although you can eat that, it's not anywhere close to pulling apart. At that temp, the fat hasn't rendered, and it's not great in my opinion. The temp should ideally be 205 degrees. So I have to wrap this in tin foil or we'll be here all night. Wrapping the pork butt speeds up the cooking process significantly. And ideally I should have wrapped this around 150 to 155 degrees when the stall happens, but I just wanted to test Ninja's own cooking times. And at least for pork shoulder, it's way off. In reality, it took about 10 and a half hours with the wrap. If I didn't wrap it, probably well over 12 hours. So if you make this, be prepared to wrap it or start it real early. So this looks great, the bone pulled out fairly clean and it pulled out apart fantastically as you would expect for something that slow cooked for 10 and a half hours. The meat was a tad bit on the dry side but that's because I didn't have a pan of water and I didn't periodically spritz it with apple cider or a mop sauce. But otherwise, it's not that bad. Do I think this oven has an advantage over a conventional smoker for smoking? Absolutely not. If you primarily want to smoke meat, get a dedicated smoker. You can get one cheaper than this and you can fit a lot more in it. But what you can't do in a dedicated smoker is cook a pizza. And that's what I'm excited about. But first, I need to get someone to clean this thing. Because that smoke absolutely trashed it. Ninja's manual says the oven should be thoroughly cleaned after each use. And honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to clean it. Because there's so many nooks and crannies to get into. And this smoke is literally hardened on there. It's like painted on. Ideally, it would be nice to be able to quickly remove the burner and fan cover, but everything is screwed down tight, and for some reason, they use two Phillips head in a Torx bit. Let's see who wants to clean it. Oh, who's cleaning this thing? Ew, that's gloves. Ew, no way. Uh, no. I guess, since this is an outdoor oven, it falls within my purview. I'm using a couple nylon brushes and scrubbers, and where I have access to, it's getting clean. It's just impossible to get into all the nooks and crannies. I had to let the racks and pan soak overnight, and after a good soaking, I was able to get them cleaned up pretty decent. I did encounter something weird. My oven continued to drip sludge from this one hole underneath. The oven was never in the rain, but it continued to leak until I tipped it over and drained it all out. Okay, so now that it's cleaned, let's make some pizza. For this test, I'm not bothering with Ninja's little pizza cheat sheet on how to make a pizza. I'll just be referring to it for times and temps. I have my own dough recipes and I use the pizza app for my measurements. This is a great app and it's free. You can plug in how many dough balls you want at what size, the hydration you're using, and the kind of yeast and what temperatures they'll be proofing at, both fridge temp and room temp, and then it gives you the correct measurements to use. It also lets you keep notes if you like to experiment. I like 60% hydration for both New York style as well as Neapolitan style, and I feel that's a good hydration where the dough is not too sticky to work with. If it's too sticky, it's a problem sliding off the peel. Stick with 60% if you're a newbie. So you'll notice the quick start guide says Neapolitan style, and that's because there's a whole mess of guidelines for it to actually be considered a Neapolitan pizza, a few of which are it has to be cooked in an approximately 900 degree 
wood fire oven for 60 to 90 seconds. If I were to call any pizzas made in this oven Neapolitan, the pizza police would come from my head. But we can do Neapolitan style. So for Neapolitan style, you should be using a double zero flour. Caputo is kind of the gold standard, and this flour holds up extremely well to high heat. Much hotter than this oven can go. It's also a very simple recipe. Flour, water, salt, and yeast. I'm making this recipe the day before, and I let it sit out overnight. I don't refrigerate it at all. It needs just a tiny bit of yeast. My New York recipe is similar, except I'm using King Arthur bread flour and equal amounts of salt and sugar. I let these bulk proof overnight. Just make sure at least a few hours before you make the pizzas, you ball them up and let them continue to proof in their bald state. For the Neapolitan, I'm making the dough balls about 220 grams and the New York style are about 340 grams for a total of 11 pizzas. Four New York style and seven Neapolitan because I really want to test the high heat in this oven. So I'm going to do the New York style first because I figure it's easier to heat the stone up hotter than cool it down. We're doing simple cheese and pepperoni pizzas and I'm using a jarred sauce which I typically don't do but we accidentally discovered this Rios' spicy marinara which is actually amazing on pizzas. I'm not sure I'll ever make my own sauce again because I like this so much. So my technique is to stretch the dough then pull it onto a lightly floured peel. The excess flour will fall through the holes. Give it a quick test and make sure it's sliding nice. If you add the toppings first, sometimes it's harder to get on the peel. I then apply the toppings and you can't go crazy here. You have to keep it kind of light or you're going to have trouble getting it off the peel. You want to make sure your peel is nice and clean around the pizza. You don't want any sauce or cheese hindering the launch. And right before you launch, give it another quick slide test because if it ain't sliding, it's dying. Do not try to force it off the peel. If you do, you'll send it toppings first into the oven. And if that happens, you've ruined pizza night and your family will basically disown you. You can fix it by adding a little more flour to the sticky parts and blowing the flour underneath. Okay, this is my first launch, just a simple cheese pizza, and the New York setting is 475 degrees for eight minutes, which sounds about right to me. Eight minutes in, and it's time to pull the pizza, and the top looks great. Let's check out the undercarriage. The undercarriage is slightly less brown than I like, after a little trial and error, I went to the custom setting and I got pretty decent results with a temperature of 550 degrees in four minutes. I only had four pizzas to dial it in, but I'm close. Now on to the Neapolitan style. So for these, I'm going more traditional and using San Marzano tomatoes hand crushed, a little salt, fresh mozzarella, and of course the dough made with Caputo double zero. I've got the oven cranked to 700 degrees on the preset and it's set for three minutes. By comparison, a traditional 900 degree pizza oven can cook these in 60 to 90 seconds, but three minutes is acceptable. I've also got the smoke box going for hopefully a wood fire taste. So for the first one, I could kind of smell it starting to burn, but I wanted to see what three minutes would do. It's a little burny. Remember on my other pizza ovens, I can see in real time what's happening. Maybe a glass door would be a nice touch for this oven. This one is slightly overdone, but that's good because it means we can reduce the time for an even quicker bake. A Neapolitan should be floppy with chewy texture, and this is crispy. It also should have a distinctive leopard pattern, which this doesn't have, but it's still a good pizza. Okay, so from here on out, I'm abandoning the San Marzano tomatoes. The spicy Reos is just too good, I have to use it. For the next few batches, I start to reduce my bake times, and I ended up with 700 degrees for two minutes. That was the closest I could come to what a Neapolitan should look and taste like. The crust was airy and delicious, but it still wasn't Neapolitan in my opinion. I think the oven needs to be a couple hundred degrees hotter and then we'd be there. That's okay for me because New York is my favorite style and that's typically what I make unless we're having a party and I'm banging out pizzas quick and you can still do that in this oven. Two minutes is very efficient. Even four minutes for a New York style is great. Also, I did not detect any smoke flavor on the pizzas, so I wouldn't even bother using it. They're just not in there long enough for any smoke flavor to occur. It does a lot better at low temps starting off in a cold oven. Cleanup won't be too bad on the stone. I didn't have any accidents. Just wipe it off with a dry towel or nylon brush. You don't want to use soap as the stone is porous. And obviously, let it cool down first. I did burn myself on this door a couple times, so watch out for that. Would I buy this oven solely for pizzas? Probably not in my case, although it does a great job. I just think my two current pizza ovens do a better job as that's what they're solely designed to do. And that brings up a great point. This oven isn't a one trick pony. It's kind of a Swiss army knife of ovens. It doesn't stand out in any one particular category, but it does a decent job at everything. It made a decent smoke pulled pork and it made a great pizza. How many kitchen appliances can you say that about? 
If you're looking for a compact unit that does a little bit of everything, this is a great option. If you live somewhere where propane or charcoal are not allowed, this would be perfect. It's not going to handle the amount of food a traditional pellet grill can handle, but maybe you want something more compact and versatile. I can easily lift this oven up and bring it in for storage, although Ninja said it's designed to live outdoors with a cover. So that's it for this review. I'll have links in the description for the stuff we used. God bless and see you on the next one. Ah! Oh! Did you get that? Oh. Didn't it, but that was pretty epic. I just flopped it over because I was trying to... Save it. I lo almost lost it. And then I tried to save it and I just actually made a kill zone. So. That was a perfect flop though. Thank you. Looks good.